now we are going to discuss the wave functions of butadiene and we will see how we can uh, arrive at some important information about the molecule from a knowledge of these wave functions. What you see here is an example of one of the wave functions that we are going to encounter in a few minutes. But before that this is where we are, uh, we have worked out the Huckel MOT formulation for butadiene, we have expressed the pi molecular orbital as a linear sum of these 4 p orbitals on the 4 carbon atoms and in the secular equation what we have done is we have said that equivalent carbon atoms have h i i equal to h j j equal to alpha and we have set that alpha to 0 and we make all the measurements from there because essentially that denotes the energy of a p z electron in the molecular framework. We have said that this uh, h i j and h j i they are equal to resonance integral when only when i and j are adjacent to each other. So, 1 and 2, 2 and 3, 3 and 4 no other combination for all other combinations we set them to be equal to 0 and we have discussed why uh, we are justified in doing that. And the overlap is set to 0 in all cases because we are talking about a pi overlap anyway which is not all that strong it is uh, fairly weak all right. And uh, then we have simplified it a little bit and we have uh, written the determinant in terms of beta x is essentially energy in terms of beta setting alpha to be equal to 0 that is how we can read it and we have found some values of x from there we constructed the energy diagram. Once we know this energy diagram from our knowledge of ethylene we know that we can now plug this uh, expression for energy back in the 4 linear equations that we had for the molecular orbitals and we can determine the coefficients. We can but we will not do here because it is a little tedious, uh, whoever is interested is welcome to give it a try, it will take a little time but you can do it now that you know ethylene anyway. I am just going to show you the results, these are the results, these are the energy levels E1, E2, E3, E4 actually in hindsight I should have written them E Roman 1, Roman 2, Roman 3, Roman 4 because I have denoted the wave functions by psi 1, psi 2, psi 3, psi 4 where 1, 2, 3, 4 are in Roman numerals and this is just to differentiate uh, the label for the molecular orbitals from the label of the atomic orbitals that participate in the linear combination or you can think labels of the atoms themselves. So, these are the coefficients that come out. And once you look at the coefficient you see this nice symmetry that was there in the secular determinant sort of reflected here as well. Mod of the coefficient is just 0.3717 or 0.6015 all right and uh, they just keep changing places you all uh, always have 2.3717s and 2.6015s uh, as coefficients no matter which molecular orbital you take. It is just that uh, in the first one all of these coefficients have positive sign, in the other three two of them have positive sign whereas two of them have negative sign, very nice symmetric permutation combination kind of uh, happy situation. Okay. So, now what we will do is we will draw the uh, sort of cartoon representation, what we have drawn here is also a cartoon representation, a cartoon representation of uh, these MOs. Here you see we have drawn chi 1, chi 2, chi 3, chi 4 as uh, orbitals with the same height because they are all independent p orbitals. Now we are going to multiply their height by the coefficient, so now the heights are going to change. So in psi 1 for example uh, the height of chi 1 will be uh, little more than half of the chi height of chi 2, height of chi 2 and chi 3 will be same because both have coefficients 0.6015 height of chi 4 is going to be same as height of chi 1 and once again little more than half of the heights of chi 2 and chi 3 right. So, this is your uh, chi 1 that is how we have drawn it. Of course, this is all approximate cartoon depiction, uh, but we understand this very nicely. And also uh, another thing that I have done here is since we have minus signs coming up later on I have drawn two lobes in two different colors one of them is plus one of them is minus which one is plus which one is minus I do not know and I do not care as long as we decide that uh, solid uh, ellipses are plus and uh, empty hollow ellipses are minus or the other way around as long as we stick to one convention throughout we are good. Now let us think of what will happen for psi 2, 
in situ the uh, magnitudes are going to just get reversed right because now chi 1 is multiplied by 0 0.6015 chi 2 is multiplied by 0 0.3717. So, obviously this chi 1 orbital will be bigger chi 2 orbital will be smaller remember when I say chi 1 orbital will be bigger or smaller I mean actually chi 1 multiplied by coefficient ok. One more thing will happen and that is we have 2 minus signs here. So, uh, if I have taken it like this for chi 3 and chi 4 I should have hollow lobes at the top and solid lobes at the bottom. So, this is your chi 2 I hope this is clear not difficult at all. What about chi 3? I encourage you to work out chi 3 yourself before uh, going to the next step. Well, first of all we have alternate plus and minus signs and uh, magnitude is more or less similar to chi 2 but signs are going to reverse uh, not exactly alternately between 1 and 2 and between 3 and 4. There is no sign change between uh, 2 and 3 this is chi 3 and this is chi 4 there is a sign change after every atom. And when I say sign change of course we know that we are talking about nodes. So, let us try and draw some nodes one node is there already the uh, molecular plane itself is a node that comes from the basic properties of the p orbitals anyway. In addition uh, some nodes arise is there any node other than the molecular uh, plane in psi 1 not really no node. What about psi 2 do we have a node in psi 2 yes we do this is a node that is where the sign changes. What about psi 3 we have 2 nodes here between 1 and 2 and here between 3 and 4 between 2 and 3 there is no node and if you are a little sorry that there is no node between 2 and 3 well our wish is fulfilled in the last one and we have a node between uh, any pair of neighboring carbon atoms and uh, that is why your uh, signs keep on changing every time. We have drawn the wave functions this is how it is drawn and uh, once you understand this things like benzene should become cakewalk. Now let us see can we uh, get some idea about things like charge distribution can we get some idea about things like uh, bond order from these coefficients from these orbitals. So, first thing to remember is that if I sum over the what, what am I summing over n is carbon atom right. So, I am summing from left to right if I sum from and here I have made a mistake because n should be from uh, not Roman 1 to Roman 4 because Roman 1 to Roman 4 remember is actually the designator for uh, MO and not atom. So, this is 1 to 4. So, when we sum over all the atoms then I should get 1 when I sum the square of coefficients why that is the normalization condition is not it because remember is it safe to write here it is safe to write here I think. This condition we have made sure that it is always fulfilled say so psi 1 psi integral psi 1 psi 1 equal to 1. What does that mean? It means that 0 0.3717 square I will just write it once integral chi 1 chi 1 before going any further what is this integral this is equal to 1 because chi 1 chi 2 these are all normalized by themselves plus what is the second term second term I can write something like this 0 0.3717 into 0 0.6015 multiplied by integral chi 1 chi 2 I am normalizing remember. So, I have to integrate over all space this what is this we have said that the overlap integral is equal to 0 in Huckel treatment. So, this is equal to 0. So, the only things have to that we have to worry about are integral chi 1 chi 1, integral chi 2 chi 2, integral chi 3 chi 3, integral chi 4 chi 4 right. So, uh, that is uh, what it is. So, and these integrals are 1 anyway. So, uh, essentially what you get is 0 0.3717 square plus right here. 0 0.6015 square and again you have 6015 square and 3715 square. So, I can just write 2 multiplied by this this is equal to 1 and you can see that that is actually the case. So, this is, we have written these in uh, normalized form. I 
I will keep this because this is something that is going to come handy right now. So, that is the first thing that comes from normalization condition. Okay. Now, let us think about charge distribution. What is the meaning of charge distribution? If I think of a particular carbon atom, the pi electronic charge on it is given by C i n square multiplied by n i summed over i equal to 1 to 4, where n i is the number of electrons in the i th mo. And here again, I should write uh, i equal to Roman 1 to Roman 4. N i C i I n square. What does this actually mean? Well, square of coefficient is the contribution of that orbital and uh, N i is the number of electrons in it. So, what is the number of electrons in psi 1? It is 2. What is the number of electrons in psi 2? It is 2 once again. What is the number of electrons in psi 3 and psi 4? 0. This is what we had drawn earlier. So, that is what we have to find that is will give us the total pi electronic charge on nth atom we can work with the first atom. Let us work it out what it is for the first atom yeah what will it be 0.3717 square multiplied by 2 see 0.3717 square multiplied by 2 plus 0 0.6015 square multiplied by 2 that we know already that that is equal to 1 and you can it is just plain arithmetic you can do it. So, it does not matter which n you take ok does not matter which atom you take 1, 2, 3 or 4 when I say 1, 2, 3 or 4 I mean uh, these. these, these 1, 2, 3, 4. So, uh, it does not matter which atom you take pi electronic charge is always 1 which means that the charge the electrons are distributed uniformly across the molecule. So, this is a uh, result that we know is correct. So, it is good that we have arrived at that. So, when we drew that uh, uh, valence bond theoretical picture we had some charge separation. Does that mean that the uh, charge density on electron number uh, uh, carbon 1 number 1 or carbon, carbon number 4 is any different? Not really the average value still comes out to be same. But here we get very elegantly the idea that we have uniform distribution of pi electron a situation that is uh, sort of analogous to dihydrogen H2 not HF. In HF you do not have a uniform distribution of electrons. Here we have a uniform distribution of pi electrons like the uniform distribution of sigma electrons in dihydrogen that is what we see. Another thing that we can work out is bond order from the coefficients. So, this C i r into C i s gives you the pi electron charge in the i th mo between adjacent atoms r and s. So, if I multiply 0 0.3717 by 0 0.6015 then I get an idea of pi electron charge density between 1 and 2 and the bond order is given by this this product multiplied by n i where n i is the number of electrons in the i th mo sum over uh, i equal to 1 to 4 ok. So, let us try to do that what is uh, p 1 2 what do I multiply by 2 c 1 1 c 1 2 0 0.3717 0 0.6015 plus 2 c 2 1 so c 1 2 what are these 2's? these twos are the number of electrons n i and these are the coefficients for uh, 1 and 2 that we get for from uh, orbital 1 and orbital 2. So, essentially 0 0.3717, 0 0.6015, 0 0.6015, 0 0.3717 and the product is added. So, basically that gets multiplied by 4 actually because 1, 2 comes from here and there are 2 such terms. The answer that you get is 0 0.8942 pi bond order between 1 and 2 carbon 1 and carbon 2 
is 0 0.8942. In fact, when I did do the calculation, I get 8943, but I have gone with the value given in the book. What about uh, 2 and 3? Similarly, using the coefficients, this time which coefficients will you use? 0 0.6015, 0 0.6015, 0 0.3717, minus 0 0.3717. Please remember that it is not plus 0 0.3717. When you multiply a positive quantity by a negative quantity, you get a negative quantity. So, you do that 2C1, 2C13 plus 2C22, C23, then you get 0 0.4473. What is uh, P34? By symmetry, it is the same as P12, 0.8942. Okay. So, what is the total bond order that we get approximately? 0.9 plus 0.9 is 1.8 plus 0.4 is a uh, little more than 2, is not it? Well, but that comes because we have done the calculation this way, uh, you will not get whole numbers here because remember the stabilization of bonding, the stabilization of antibonding, these are also not exactly the same. So, we get approximately total bond order that is uh, similar to what we get from valence bond theory. But the more important picture that we get here is that the pi bond order between 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 is uh, about double the pi bond order between 2 and 3. And that is what you expect from valence bond theory resonance picture as well. Because in order to get the double bond between 2 and 3, you need to have charge separation which is not such a happy situation. So, we get a uh, similar picture than what we would have got from valence bond theory. The good thing is we get it in a more mathematically rigorous way using Huckel approximation that can easily be extrapolated to bigger molecules like this naphthalene. So, naphthalene uh, the problem is that it is too large a molecule, the determinant is huge. So, what we do there is that we use symmetry to factorize the determinant and we get uh, expressions like this, this phi 1, phi 2, phi 3, these are the p orbitals and from there one can work out the energy levels and you can work out these are the wave functions anyway. What you see here B3G, AU, so on and so forth, these are let us for now just say that these are the symmetry labels of this. Uh, orbitals that are involved there. So, that opens up an entirely uh, new angle altogether. What we learn from there is that using symmetry, you can uh, simplify quantum mechanical problems to a very great deal. Have we done that in a small way already? Actually, we have right. Remember what we said? We said that P34 is equal to P12 by symmetry. So, this is just the tip of the iceberg. It is a hint that symmetry has an important role to play whenever we try to do a quantum mechanical treatment of these big molecules. But let that be the story for another day. Today we have learned that uh, in butadiene using Huckel theory, we can work out the energies, we can work out the wave functions and from the wave functions, we can work out the uh, electron distribution and it turns out that electron is distributed uniformly over the molecule and also we can work out the bond order. When you go to bigger molecules like benzene and all similar treatment is extended.